This week's episode is sponsored by Helio Gas Detection. Hey everybody, this is Richie from the Metal Cell Podcast. I'm delighted to welcome Broken Habit onto the show for the first time. I've got uh, John O'Reilly on the bottom screen, who is the vocalist, and John Foley up on my left, as and he's the guitarist of the band. Welcome to the show, lads. How are you? Yeah. Um, have, I, I was just saying to John Foley that I haven't heard much of you before um, in relation to the scene. And it was a really fucking nice surprise when I think it was um, Rob, the other guitarist, contacted mm-hmm. me and sent sent me on the link to the album and I was or the EP and I was just going, shit, man, this is great. It's real kind of uh, new metal, but with a different kind of slant in it as well. So, you know, that got my attention straight away. So, con- first of all, congratulations on the new EPs to date. Thanks, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, um, a lot of work went into that. <laughs> now, de- okay, let's let's actually go straight into it because you know, so like the advantages of Bandcamp for someone like me is you know you get to see who recorded it, you get to see the lyrics and stuff. Um, so that source of information wasn't there for me. So maybe we might just talk about how he how he kind of got together the songs and. Did you home record, demo it, and then bring it to somebody? Because there's no information on that for yeah. even. Yeah, so what we did was uh, Rob did music production in college. Um, so he has all the kit. Right. So we were in, um, you know, Pyra Studios, and they get they have a recording, a vocal boot. And we just did it all like that. Rob, Rob set everything up, Rob recorded it. We banged it out in about a week. It went well, yeah. We do a lot of um writing wise, we kinda it's the five of us, we you know, in, in the room together and we were like we our goal was to release we started as, you know, a cover band yeah. and we were like we were doing the covers for about a year. Like I count like we're we're together a lot longer than a year, but you know, we we got together just before uh everyone took a two year break from the world. So Okay. Okay, so did you but you did yeah. you spot a hole in the market then for a we'll say a new metal cover band? Was it Linkin Park? Were you doing Limp Bizkit? It started, it started off as just Linkin Park. Okay. And like I my voice. Remember, mm. it kind of started in one practice session we had where I was I was playing some random riff and then our drummer Andrew was saying, Jesus, that sounds like break stuff. Like, okay. oh yeah, it does a little bit. Yeah. And then or John O'Reilly here was mm-hmm. in the bathroom at the time, and as they're playing that, he just kicks the door in and starts singing the verses to it and just went yeah. into it. Then, yeah, I mean, like that's <laughs> it's like it's, it's, it's one of those shit, moments yeah. you couldn't plan. Like it was just <laughs> yeah, perfect. It was, it was perfect. Like <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much how we do all our covers. We're like, lads, yeah. what what songs do we like? And it kind of we liked doing the covers, and then mm. you know, I I was hungry for another. I was in a I was in a band maybe about eight or nine years ago. It feels like at this stage, you know. Um and we were just I was just hungry for to do music you know in any shape or form so once John, other John, <laughs> yeah. got in contact with us and was like yeah you know, do you want to sing in this band I was like yeah sure you know, no nice and so. then from there it was just like yeah you know let's do it and I always wanted to push towards originals anyway you know so mm. once once yeah, I kind of once we kind of. We're doing we're doing covers, we're doing covers, we're doing covers, and the sound keeps changing, and the sound keeps changing. And then we do uh Tears Down Fall by Bullet, uh from Valentine. And that's like that's a favourite of mine. And you know, I I'm I'm a big metal car, hardcore head, you know? Okay. So once that kind of happened and I saw like John Foley and Rob being able to play, you know, once I saw them doing those five seven five riffs, I was like, All right, what if we what if we take the metal car? Yeah, we take the new metal and we kind of do mm, mash it a up. Little, yeah, I, I kind of if we were to put ourselves in a in a pigeonhole, I always call us new metal car. That's, new metal you know, car, that's, nice. That's yeah. that's that's what I lo- that's what I always think it is because we do we have those punchy new metal like din din in it, you know, yeah. riffs, and then all of a sudden we're just like bam 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 bam, you know. So yes, yes, and that's uh, yeah, yeah. I, I like the way like 
again, uh, you, um, this is to, we'll say John one down below me again, that, um, <laughs> That John, over the years as a vocalist, you you found yourself evolving musically wise as well, I'd imagine. So, you know, with this new incantation of Broken Habit and and with this new release, do you think you're you're kind of getting to the pinnacle of your vocal style? Definitely, yeah. Okay. So I think I I think this EP was a what's the word for it like a a selection, you know, I, I'm not sure if you listen to the full EP yourself, every song I think sounds different. Yes. And I think I sound different. I don't think there's a consistent beat throughout the EP. I think it's mm. six it's songs. Like a, yeah. It's mm-hmm. like a show, a showcase of the range we have. Yeah. 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 It's okay. like six songs with an overlapping theme. Like it was mm. a concept EP, like start to finish the songs, like all okay. the lyrics, they're all connected. Okay. But like when it came to style, each one, I was like, I kind of want to do this. I kind of want to do this. I kind of want to do this. I'm always hoping my ideal scenario would be people feedback. They're like, these are our three favorite songs. Yeah. And everyone, you know, that's kind of seems to be what's happening with ego, uh, traumatized and endings. Everyone seems to love those three songs. And yes. I'm like, that's the sound. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with you on those those three actually that you do. It's, it's, <laughs> um, ego particularly is um it's a huge life favor from the clips that I saw as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah people love that one. Yeah, so it's, John, it's like the lyrics, the lyrics are pure filth, and I remember the day it was released, <laughs> <laughs> and like my parents listened to us, and it's like I was hoping they wouldn't question me on the lyric content of <laughs> ego, and I remember getting a text off my dad saying like. This ego song is brilliant. I love the song. I love the lyrics. And I was like, oh no. Uh, <laughs> I had to explain to me, man, now what all some of this means. <laughs> so John F. Um, and that's yeah. the way I'm gonna address it for the interview because it's too confusing. So John F is gonna be oh, good. John we go, Foley. We go, we go by last names a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah. So John F. <laughs> um developing the sound as like John uh talked about there, uh developing yeah. it, like I know how how much was of a jump was it from being a covers band to experimenting with new music and kind of getting in new flavors as as John said there about bullet for a valentine and stuff um you were open to that anyway obviously yeah yeah of course i mean it was like um we played these covers we played these songs and um like we kind of had that style of playing those songs kind of down and but we also listen to all different kinds of things mm. as well. So like some a lot of more modern stuff as well. So it kind of like how can we give these older like n- late nineties sounds a bit of a modern twist to them as well? Yeah. So it's kind of like just trying to go into the the old brain here and just think like, okay, I can play this and I can play this kind of sound as well. So how can I merge the two of them together? Yeah. That's how kind of a lot of us kind of came about really. Mm. Um. What about swapping like was, swapping leads and stuff? Um, yeah, I mean, like, just because there's two like lead lines and guitar solos on the EP. Like, yeah. I do one, and then Rob does the other. So that it's not like this guy's lead only, this guy's yeah, rhythm yeah. only. Like, we, we swap and change it so like everything's kind of balanced in a way. If you get yes, me, I do. Yeah, yeah. That was the that was the goal from we were putting them together anyway. Mm. But like anyone will tell you as well that like um, recording drums is always the most difficult part. In any band, yeah, it was. um, so maybe talk us through that, um, whichever one of you. Um, trying to remember because we weren't actually there when they were being recorded. It was us, um, our drummer Andrew and Rob. Mm. Um, it's like they basically had to hurl Andrew's whole kiss into Pyrus, and then every mic we could find, we just talked on tried to hook it up. Right. And like we'd already recorded, um, see when we we're demoing, Rob done most of it on a, a MIDI track. Okay. So they, so they kind of had the basis of what the songs are going to sound like through that. Mm-hmm. And basically when we were recording, we were kind of playing along with that MIDI track. Okay. So we recorded bass and guitars first. And then uh, and then basically had the MIDI drums going with that. So Andrew was kind of playing along with the MIDI drums that we put together for right. it. Okay. That's that's basically how we got the drum lines down. But I know it took, I think, 12 hours to record the drums, like yeah. one whole day. Like, yeah. We got it all done, like. Fair play to him. Yeah, that, that couldn't yeah. have been easy. Um like again with Rob, it's 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 such a, a crucial part to a band that has some that has a guy there that can actually do that free and not the financial outlay always in a band, it's it's you're always 
putting money out there, you're rarely making yeah. money back, you know? So mm -hmm. what are the other talents of the members there? Is there someone looking after the social media side of it? You know, do you all have different roles in the band as such? Or is there one or two yeah. just coasting along? You can name and shame if you want. <laughs> <laughs> social media okay and um because john o'reilly here and rob um have been around the scene a little bit longer than most of us have been really and they kind of have a few contacts so um, mm. getting gigs to them was another okay. thing and then just randomly we got contacted by a couple of people that seen us online as well okay yeah that's yeah. it yeah um everyone everyone does a bit you know like we've luckily it was you can see happen with bands sometimes, you know, everyone knows the same people. It's five friends. Mm -hmm. And I think one of our strengths is in a way that we're five strangers that met up, you know, so okay. everyone's like able to reach into different pots, reach into different groups. Okay. And we're really pulling in um, a lot of, you know, like, especially with even going set up the EP, some of the lads do postering, some of the lads do this, you know, some of the lads do promoting. So we're all just kind of, taking bits and doing bits um yeah. but it does kind of you know it does kind of break down we're trying to get i trying to give rob a break from doing nothing else at the moment because he's uh he did the, he did the production full production full recording yeah take it easy i'm looking forward to the next ep i think we're going to i want to i want to try and outsource some of it i want to try do some of it with rob and i i think i think we'd really benefit and i think it'll take us to that next level sound wise i think the ep is almost just there yeah. But I think there's definitely like a professional studio mixed with a consistent sound. So like the next EP is definitely going to be written around the sound that we think, I think we found, mm. you know, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And there's, there's actually plenty of um, producers out there that would actually give you a different kind of slant as well, you know, because it, mm. it's, it's such a fucking hard thing to do when you're in the middle of it yourself, you know, it's, it's like a whirlwind going round, you know, and you're relying on your bandmates to fucking be truthful and say, you know, hey, the sound is good, the sound is isn't good, you know, and sometimes it's often just get it to some stage and then give it to someone else, as you said, John, and let them. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. them. I've done, of, I've done. I've done a couple so far, like a couple of EPs. So it's it's definitely a process, like, and some definitely it's the same person recording and mastering. I I'm not I wouldn't be fully you know I I do like the EP I'm happy with the EP but I know there's that difference because you need a fresh set of ears in someone yeah. who hasn't touched it at all and yeah. they can be like I think this is the best version and also as well like with Rob being in the band like there's there's always gonna you're always gonna have that you know this is my song this is my baby and sometimes you need someone to fuck off you know like yeah someone to, yeah yeah no it's true you know so so you were saying there. Um, that there's a team running through the whole album, so maybe we'll talk about the, like the cover, you know, straight away. It's you're under no illusion what the cover is suggesting, but when yeah. you have sedate on it, though, it's the, is that just the, the influence of the drugs, or is there other teams that are? Is it just yeah, a whole concept tied in together or what? It's a whole, like, it's uh, I, it's like a self-reflective EP from me growing up. Okay. And it's just, the, you know, the drugs, the partying, and where does it kind of end? You mm. know, like, you know, and there's a lot of, like, he, like, there's a song on the album called Anxiety. And, yeah. you know, sometimes I feel like, you know, especially when I was younger, going out you had to be the big man have to be like yeah 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 mm. and it's just like you know i hate going out you know yeah i you know I, i'd rather just you know watch a film at home have a couple of cans you know i don't you don't, don't need this constant partying and when i was growing up like that's just what i felt like it's like you kind of get to this stage of like are these my friends or are these the people that i drink with you know yes. and i think yeah. and then especially like you know the drugs and everything you know it's looking back now it's like it was time spent. I don't know if it was time well spent, but yeah, it was yeah. definitely time spent. Yeah. And, you know, the album obviously teeters off into a, a darker side, you yeah. know, and stuff that, you know, stuff that I struggled with. And that's, you know, kind of where I end that, you know what I mean? And that's... And was there much discussion over the album or the EP cover even? 
not really. The lads just kind of went, this is your baby, John. And then I said, this is my idea. And everyone went, great. Okay. Nice. I mean, it's been way before we're supposed to submit it to like Spotify and all that. And that's the first time we all actually seen the cover for the first time. Yeah, I was working on it for a while. I'm like, this is it. We hadn't even... Okay. We hadn't even seen it until then. And I remember when the first time I've seen it, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is going to get people's attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a it's so relevant still in our society and prevalent, isn't it? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I live next door to a methadone clinic, you know. This is <laughs> this is this is the life we live and a big thing I always believe in. I think a lot of young people and especially in Ireland, like that's why music is has always been so important to me. It's that it's very easy to do do nothing, you know. Yeah. You know what? What can we do after eight o'clock at night? Everywhere is closed. Drink and party. That's it. Yeah. You know, and that's why going to gigs and you know seeing bands that I've grown up with and you know even the t-shirt you're wearing yourself. I've seen Asex so many times. Mm. Like you know, it's just like all these bands are like I think Ireland and Dublin. I haven't got to explore much. You know, I've been to Cork and Galway a couple of times, but you know, I think the Dublin metal scene about eight years ago was fantastic yeah and i just love to see it come back to be as strong as it was like i feel like it's teetered off i feel like the venue's closing down yeah i feel like there's not not as many promoters around not as many people willing to take chances on young bands Mm. so i I would love to see that resurgence definitely yeah Um, there's there's still some of it there though because last summer we played the templemore metal festival (laughs) yeah and um, I was quite surprised to see how much of a turnout that little festival got. Yeah, like yeah, the place was packed out. Like, and there were some great bands on the bill. Like, because there was um, Worst That Burn were one of the main, main bands on that. Unreal. Then there's a, mm. they were yeah, they were unreal. Yeah, there's loads of great bands on that as well. Um, Chemical Chops. Addiction were were a great one as well. Yeah, yeah, they're fucking fantastic. Yeah, listen, we have we have just an amazing scene. At the moment, but I think the biggest problem, John, as you were saying, is the lack of promoters as well and venues. That's a huge, huge thing. And uh, and I'd love to see underage gigs coming through as well. But where do they fucking play? You know, there's that's no it. Like you can't bring kids to a public. No, you know, I, rem- I remember I remember my first gigs at 16 and uh, upstairs in the point, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Back then. And then I think I, I think I've seen in all ages in old fibbers on the keys before as well like you know yeah. it's i know it's insurance and i know it's such a risk but like we can't have the only all ages gigs being in the academy you know it can't it can't go on like that it's not no, sustainable it it's not sustainable. you can't grow a scene you can't grow a, grow a scene like kids kids are the ones that go to shows we know mm. like you know you see the queues for the tree arena you see the queues for olympia mm. you know there aren't queues like that outside of Fibbers McGee, yeah. you know, like, you know, and... And to know what, ones. the way the siege of Limerick run it as well, uh, you you can see, like, a huge amount of um, younger, underage people there up to six, half, six, seven, mm-hmm. you know? And, and then they clear them out. Yeah, they, they clear them out. But at that stage, they're, they're probably after seeing, I would say, they'd have maybe, I would say around 14 bands all playing around that time. Yeah. You know, right. so it's it's they will get a nice glimpse into what's out there, and you know whether it'll influence them. You would hope so, you know, um, because I mean the way the way it's going, like there's no outlet for younger people once again, you know. Mm-hmm. I because remember it used to be sorry, one. Just because we of had one when I was um we had one when I was a lot younger. Remember the um blasts they were called. You used to have them in the yeah. Temple Bar Music Center, mm. and yeah. um, some bands that played in that did go on to do quite well. Because remember, um, Bell X One played it before. I remember. Wow. Yeah, that that's when they were nobodies, and then they kind of blew up for a while after that. But we were like 13, 14 years of age going to them. Yeah. And they and like it was it was fine going in for them. No bother. They had get great days for for them, but it just nothing like that anymore. Yeah, but you can remember the excitement going in there, though, John. Yeah. We like we know we didn't know who was playing. He just went because it was a gig. Yeah, that's it. Like, and especially because th- these kids, like these fifteen, sixteen, seventeen year olds, they're the ones that are having a rough in school. You know, like it's we all we all know. Like we all mm. we know walking through walking around. Like I, I live in Kandak, and you know what I mean. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like you yeah. know, uh, you know, it's and not going to be easy growing up. And I tell you now, situations. John, if it's any consolation, I was, I'd. Plenty of mates in Clondalkin, 
went back in 1992, 93, and you would never see metalheads out there <laughs> at all. Like it was just a no. different culture. It's, it's weird yeah. to explain it that way, but it certainly was. You wouldn't see metalheads yeah. out there exactly, at all. Yeah. You know, like that opportunity is for those gigs, for those kids, especially if they feel isolated, especially if they feel alone. To meet other people like them, and you know, yeah. the same with any event, you realize, ah, oh, look, I'm going to go to my first metal gig. You know, some people mm. make friends for life there, you know. Some they people do, are yeah. like, you it's know. Good point. Yeah. yeah. I would love to see the return of the All Ages, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know. I Potentially, maybe the Wiley Fox could do it. The place that's where the point is, you know. I think, I think they have. Hmm? It's a sound house. It's a sound house now, yeah, yeah. Sound yeah, house, yeah. Sorry, okay. yeah. I think I think they have the spot, or no, the academy is never going to take a loss, you know. So you're not going to get them anywhere else. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, um, you know, you changed your name as well from breaking habit to breaking the habit. Was it to broken mm -hmm. breaking the habit? Yeah. yeah, um, I think that was a good choice. Yeah, we're happy with. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, breaking the habit was there when we were just the Lincoln Park tribute band. Yeah. But when we're veering away from that, it's like we need to change the name now. So like Broken Habit was kind of like a play on that. Mm -hmm. oh, and we just felt like it suited as well. Like yeah, because yeah, a homage to where we came from, but it's also a sign of like where we're going with it now. Like yeah, and there's there's other meanings as well to be taken out of it. You know, so it's it's yeah. it's a good it's a good title um, for a band. I I don't know. Is there? I didn't check actually. Is there other Broken Habits in the world? <laughs> I think there is actually. <laughs> Probably, yeah. We're gonna have to add uh, Ireland in brackets. Yeah, put the Ireland in it, then, especially when I'm yeah. tagging as good on, as on the socials. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not as good as us, though. Oh uh, God! So look, I'm gonna play a track endings that you kindly gave me, and yeah. um, we'll just talk about that afterwards. Sounds great, lads, as well. Sounds really good. Um, you know, when you... Yeah, vocals are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Well. Like, working on the live show, you know, is it going to be something that will be different, we'll say, in a year's time? What, what do you mean? Like, okay, so stage presence delivery everything like that um because i mean I, I certainly haven't seen you live but i've seen plenty mm. of clips of it like but where are you gonna take this live show if you could pyrotechnics just oh. dream the dream the dream, the dream. is fire <laughs> the dream is fire like very good um, lasers lots of lasers <laughs> yeah no like uh i definitely think i definitely think you know as a five piece um 
some stages are tight, so we yes. don't get a lot of we don't get a lot of space sometimes. Huh? So a lot of it is just kind of us all shoulder to collar because we're big guys. Mm. Like at least at least like me and John Foley are like take up half the stage. <laughs> like that's you know the two just shoulder to shoulder. It's like yeah. You know, so we're taking up. You know, I definitely I definitely love um I write songs now with at least some inclination to the live experience as well. And mm-hmm. um, endings the song you just played there as you went off. There's like a build, and yeah. that's that's the build, you know. Yeah. And then the drop is after yeah. that, you know. And that's definitely uh that's definitely like I really do think you know I'm writing some songs now that are, you know, this is the live song, you know. This is this is the one to mm. get everyone to join in. Uh, another song, Death, that we have on the album has like a, a crowd chanting moments and stuff. Yeah. So I'm really trying to. So you're conscious Involve, of that, like, yeah, involvement is definitely something that I've learned from going. Like uh, when I was writing songs younger, you know, they were just songs, you know. And I think now there is, you know, I realize there's more of a spectacle to it. You know, it's yeah. definitely, uh, it's definitely something that bringing everyone in together. Like that's where I'm at now when it comes to music. Like it's, it's for everyone. Yeah. It's not just for you to be egregious on stage. Like you know, yeah. if the crowd are there and the crowd are giving you energy, you have to give them all back. You know. Yeah. I think uh, Words That Burn would be a great example of that that, that you mentioned. They're phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. But um, like when we're in our practice space, we have that energy like we're all jumping around, we're all headbanging like mad idiots. Mm. But it's hard to try and do that sometimes on of the course. stages we, we played on because there are quite small stages. Yeah. Now, I thought when we played Temple Moor, now that was a big enough stage that so we had that space there. And when we played Soundhouse, um, that was a big enough stage as well, I thought. Yeah, but like most of the time, we've played like so, like Fair Fibbers and we played Dolan's as well, and they were very small stages, but they had those songs for them. Oh, yeah, that was um, what was that about Face Plant? Was it? Yeah, Face Plant, yeah, we've yeah. them a few times actually. Yeah, and like even when you're looking at the crowd for that gig, for example, Face Plant and yourselves, there certainly is an audience there for that type of music, isn't there, lads? Yeah, yeah, like it was surprising. You know, to a way like we played our release show that we played uh about two weeks ago now as a drum. Yeah, two weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, we a hundred people. Mm. Played to a hundred people in Fibber downstairs. Yeah. Like, like the place was packed out and we were surprised because we're sitting we were... there at the doors when the when people are coming in and there's just loads of people coming in wearing our merch, our t shirts. And now sitting there like holy shit, all these people wearing our t shirts are here to see us. It's even surreal like seeing people singing the yeah. songs back, you know. Yeah, like, fantastic. We, yeah. The E P came out that day. You know, yeah. it yeah. came out. Yeah. You know, and then there was people that went and learned the songs. I was like, "This is wild. This is surreal." Like, you know, it was such and, a thankful experience, like such a beautiful experience for me. Like, and even for that death song that John was talking about for the crowd participation, like they were doing that as well. Yeah, and we're even getting circle pits during endings as well. Like it got crazy as well. It was just perfect uh, moment for us. Like the tops. Yeah. And that's what you have to build on, really, isn't it? I mean, what about something like Metal to the Masses? Um, how that's do you feel? For, that's the plan, yeah. Yeah. Um, metal to the Masses. Um, one for backing as well. You want to do that too. Yeah, the backing one. Tighten up, a, tighten up a set, a heavier set for to apply to the stage. You know, like that's also something that I like about our sound. We can kind of float between heavy and not heavy. Yes, you can. Yeah. And, you know, if you get on, you know, obviously getting to meet some of these people outside of Dublin is, that's my goal for the year. Like, cause I've not, I don't know anyone outside of Dublin. I only know a couple of the Dublin boys and, you know, the ones putting on shows, you know, I'm able to talk to them and be like, listen, we'll support you and we won't, we won't play six minutes of breakdowns, you know? And yeah, then, yeah. you know, the other guys, it's like, listen, yeah, we'll only play the heavy songs. And I've got another, another, you know, six songs in the work for an album that I hope will come out in February or an EP rather. And I think by that point we'll have a consistent set and a consistent sound that we can push to like mix and match for different yeah. gen you know. Yeah. That's the plan. Anyway. We start of work on the next EP already. Yeah. 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 That's good to hear, like, but you know, it's just about at this stage, you know, cementing ye as a live entity, I feel, um, and backing up what you brought out there, I mm. uh, again, for the average punter to come in and see Broken Habit for the first time, I think you have enough in you that will retain them 
for the duration mm -hmm. of the set, which is a, a great thing to have, lads, you know. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. Um, yeah, and we've I always had so great too. game. We've always had great crowd participation with our shows because, like, even with the covers, people are singing along and they're moving around and having fun anyway. So you've kind of used that to build up our stage presence, really. Mm -hmm. So we can play that to these songs from the EP now as well, which we tried to do two weeks ago at the um, at the EP launch, and it I think it went great as well, like because the crowd were into what we were doing. Yeah, and for a lot of them, it was the first time hearing them as well. Hmm. Um. What about your? It's just I'm gonna bring it back again. Um. To band camp. What's your story with that? Are you, are you avoiding it or for some reason or? No, we just didn't. Uh, didn't put up on band camp. Okay. Um. Did you? You. If it's something you recommend, absolutely. Maybe it's something that we should try. Yeah. To get a bit more. Um, as soon as you can, John. Put it yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. And do you know um, what as well? I would suggest as well is. Um, put in the lyrics as well. Take the time to put in the lyrics with yeah, the yeah. music in Bandcamp because, like, it's a go-to for huge music fans. You know, the not the yeah. type of throwaway music fans that listen to Spotify mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Bandcamp. If you're on Bandcamp, you're a fan. You know, you're a music yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. Pe people like he was. Yeah, yeah. I remember back when I was younger, he was all the time. You yeah, know, that's sure. how I found bands that I'm like, I love this band from Norwich that released one song in 2011. You know. <laughs> Uh, still still comes in the rotation every now and again like yeah yeah no, and so, yeah. i just i didn't know why that reason was with g i was thinking okay so they're a young band but you're actually not you know no that's it yeah. like it's just i kind of thought i'll be honest with you i kind of thought the 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 day of band camp was over you know i hadn't mm -hmm. i thought kind of spotify had killed it in a way so it's kind of like we just put it on spotify yeah but and we do have a bank, and we have a band camp page because we put up some t-shirts on it before to sell some of the old t-shirts when we had a couple left from the the last batch yeah, because so, I was on it. I saw that um, it's just uh, links now to your other stuff. But I mean, certainly create one and put up a put a fiver for the EP or whatever price you want to put on it. And, you know, get your merch in yeah. there as well, you know. And, yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah. I'd say maybe in the next two weeks we might get that done because I know I know we were recounting the T-shirt stock that we have left after the gig. So we're probably going to put them up to try, try shift the last couple. Nice one. Uh, who did the the t-shirt artwork uh no kelvin um, kelvin did your logo didn't he i think it was kelvin as well uh creeper karen i believe his name is on instagram now yes. uh yeah kelvin kelvin did art um really really happy with it um love it such such a such a good such a good picture like um and you know like kind of it was just kind of i just said i want black i want a skeleton i want the logo and he just ran with it i'm like yeah perfect yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it i feel like that's that's gonna it's like it's like doing a it's like doing little prompts like the next one i want it red i want a vampire go ahead you know <laughs> and i'll see what he comes back with no but it was amazing when he when he did that and i was going onto his instagram page and just looked at the list of other bands he has done work for like mm -hmm. likes of like um trivium white chapel parkway yeah. drives yeah um slayer <laughs> and so it's like then is us yeah, because I had a fuck a wee there with them. Yeah, <laughs> and he's very re well. He was very reasonably priced. Um, so, um, I'm I'm not sure anymore. But but uh, we're all fans of Kelvin here. Um, on the show, um, he actually did the logos for the Smashing Skull sessions as well. It's not the road to park. Right, like, yeah. I think I think I think he's one of the best best artists in Ireland. Definitely. Like, um, it's a style as well. Like, it's the metal T-shirt. You know, it's it's a uh, he's really personified. Like classic metal art into like this the digital age like and i think that's great yeah and it, it's color control like with any t-shirts it's just color control because it always comes down to cost for us bands like of course especially it with, and it's like if you can make a t-shirt look great in one color if you can make it look great in two colors fair enough three colors it's like well now now <laughs> yeah. it's getting yeah now we, we, we we're not selling 25 quid t-shirts you know yeah and what but, about uh, them the are you fans of merchandise in general with bands be it irish or yeah or american bands what what would you go for yourselves is it always a t-shirt do you go back patches or uh, well, my entire ward yeah. my entire wardrobe is just all band t-shirts yeah. okay <laughs> like everything like um there's a wide range of um, stuff like there's some like bands and a like wide range of blacks as well john <laughs> yeah, it's all color coded, um, dark shade of black to a, yeah. the older ones, which are lighter shade of Midnight black. Or <laughs> this, what do we want to wear today? 
Um, but yeah, no, uh, I I really like um, t shirts and snapbacks, but you know, I wouldn't be wouldn't be getting snapbacks done. I don't think in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, I think they're probably they're probably a bomb. I didn't even bother to look. I just know they're gonna be a bomb. You know. Yeah. Even hoodie, even hoodies or crews. Like I, I have a couple Very of crews. Expensive. I just don't wear hoodies anymore. So. Yeah, like yeah. I, t- I just think like even when I went down that route initially to get the show up and running, you know, the costs were fucking ginormous for for yeah. a run of hoodies. Um, mm-hmm. it more or less broke me, and you know, it's it's well known. That I got caught for uh, the tax as well because I got them made by um, Pins and Knuckles over in England, and yeah. it had just changed. Yes, it just got changed over to Brexit. I had the order in before mm-hmm. it changed over to Brexit, but there was a delay with Hack Press. Then I went to Pins and Knuckles. Then I knew I was fucked. So yeah. I got charged six hundred and twenty euros import tax. Yeah. How the fuck do you Oof. make that back? Like, Oof. you don't. Uh, you don't. I remember the first run, run, run of t-shirts I got done maybe in 2012, I want to say. I think I paid 100 euro for 50. <laughs> Shipped from Germany. Got no way, in three days. Germany. Yeah, it was some random. I was just like, I just literally, back when I just Googled, cheap band t-shirts printing. <laughs> Found some German company. It was like 100. I got, got like, you know, 50 quid off each of the lads or 25 or whatever it was. Yeah. And like... We, they were nice t-shirts we got, I think we used them twice or three times back then But like, what was band like, was that for John? Uh, it was a band called New Age Extinction another metalcore band from the the ancient era of that real real big Irish hardcore metal scene back uh, metalcore scene back back then okay yeah but um, yeah it's just wild to see the difference like I feel like I kind of left the scene for a co- good few years because I was kind of getting um, uh, not Jealous, maybe jealous is the right word, you know, like because you go and you see the bands and you're like, oh man, I wish I was doing that again. Mm. And I was always getting, I was just getting in my own head about it, like constantly, like, you know, you, you're you can't do it anymore, John. You know, you're washed up, you know, the usual stuff. And I'm like, you know what, one last go, let's let's see if we can get a go. And that's that's where broken habit is. It's like, nice, I mean, this is this, this is it, putting it all in, either I can do it or I can't, you know, yeah, that's happened with me as well now, yeah, because like I've been through a string of bands, I got a grunge band in college. And then when that kind of ended, I kind of didn't do much at the moment. Like um, I had, I was basically starting a family at the time as well. So um, mm. that kind of took up a lot of the time. Of course. And then I was trying to, and then I hadn't really picked up a guitar in a, a couple of years. And I remember being auditioning for some band and they're, and they're like, no, you're not good. Get out. <laughs> and yeah. then that, that was something that kind of broke the confidence for a good while. And then just trying to get another thing kind of started and it just wasn't really happening. And then it was when I saw the notes on Facebook for, when this project was starting, it was our drummer Andrew and a different singer at the time. Mm-hmm. And I just said, look, they're looking to do a Lincoln Park thing. The songs are easy. And um, this could be a bit of crack. And I wasn't expecting it to be to go to where it is now. And it's yeah. kind of overwhelming a little bit where we're getting to now. Yeah. yeah. But it's still great. Like, yeah. Oh, and, I'm a put. I'm a put. Oh, sorry, go on. No, I'm just going to say it. And I think that's a key factor. What John F was saying there, a bit of crack, a bit of fun. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you that's still there with you. You can see it like. Ah, uh, yeah, we have, we have, we have such a good time. Like you know, I think, I think every practice we do, how you remind me by Nickelback. Every practice, <laughs> just because we can. Yes, no, yeah. can, that's our warm up song. We do how you remind me by Nickelback. What about the intro? Where what's the intro that you do? Um, ah, uh, best song for death. Or the, the the dance song. Yeah, what's that? It's the uh, <laughs> those kids from Cork, the Cabin Crew. No, uh, I have never heard of this. No way. This is this is fantastic. You need to Here's stop way. stop this stop this podcast right now. Go go out. It's like it's like these kids from Cork. Someone obviously like they're like a skill project or something, you know, doing it. Let's do a song. And right. some producer's like, here's the best drum and bass beat of 2024. And just like it's all these kids singing over it, and it's just like and it's just so good. I just think I think I think they're great and you know, uh here I was like, thinking it was some fucking American thing off a movie. Like, it's that no, good. No, no, it's just some load of kids from Cork. And how, how did I'll you find it? Put... Oh, I was everywhere. I don't know how you missed it, Richie. I don't, I'm not on TikTok. Is that it? Uh, that'll be it. That'll okay, be it. So. There you go. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we'd never heard of it, but O'Reilly brought it into practice one time. I was like, how about we open with this? And we're all kind of standing there going, thinking like, um, 
Okay. <laughs> Let's give this a bash to see how this works. Uh, I think it's so fun. Like I, I, and I do. I just, you know, it, again, like it reminds me of like going to shows when I was so younger. Like this is, uh, you know, if we're not making music for, for people to grow up into, like you know, yeah, who are you making music for? Like I, I'm hoping that you know one day some like some you know seventeen year old you know picks listens to a broken habit track and was like, Do you know what, I feel awful right now, and this has cheered me up a yeah. little bit. Yeah. You know, that's, you know, that's, the, it's, it is, sorry, sorry, sorry to ramble, but the EP yeah. is about like my youth, you know, like that's, that's, mm. that's where I came from. And, you know, it's, you know, where I'm going now is where I'm at, you know? Yeah. It's, it's nice to have that, um, thought process, John, you know, that whilst looking ahead and trying to change where you are personally, it's also marries in nicely to where you're going musically as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that's that, that's that's the way I look at it anyway. It's like, who are we doing this for if not you know ourselves? Like even my hair, like my hair is long. I never had my hair long in my life. I'm grow <laughs> I'm growing it to donate it, you know, like you know donate it to cancer charity. Like oh know, really? Like, okay, very yeah, good. Yeah, I grew. This is a year of growth. Like and I'm like, as soon as it gets long enough, you know, make some kids Christmas. Like yeah, nice, but, nice. You know, that's that's, that's the look. That's the kind of person i am like, at the moment now you know yeah who so, I am now, like. so you've gone through the shit stage where it's all over the place and you're getting slated like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah nice and what about you john yeah um what i found with um like when we we're recording the guitars first i remember me and our guitar player rob like we were talking like um i think it was when we were recording with something like ego and like i can pitch this being one of those songs a young kid picks up the guitar for the first time and was like, I can play this riff. This is nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of something I had in the back of my mind when we were, we were writing it as well. Cause I was kind of putting myself back to when I was a kid that age. And yeah. I was trying to learn how to be like, cause I, I started playing guitar cause I wanted to be like Kirk Cobain. Okay. <laughs> so I, I was kind of putting myself there like, Hey, these are the, these songs are easy. And I'm, and I felt like a, a millionaire, like <laughs> when I learned how to play the Nevermind album from start <laughs> to finish. I was like, oh, I'm great. I can do this. I can do this. And I was kind of thinking a young kid trying to play our songs for the first time because they're easy enough. And I was kind of transporting myself back to that when I was a kid and that mm. can probably be another kid in the future, hope maybe one day. Yeah. So it's, it's a nice but, thought to have. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So future plans, lads, before we wrap it up, um, you are keen to gig down in Cork, I would imagine, and Limerick. Yeah. And a few other places uh, that you have. Looking at Holtz and Dundalk, I want oh, to yeah. say. Yeah. What yeah. about Belfast? Yeah. Have you gone up as far as Belfast yet? We we don't know anyone up there. It's, you know, okay. it's literally, you know yourself, it's the who you know game. So right now we're just trying to build the con build contacts across across okay. Ireland. Okay. Um, um, we're hoping to get, in, you know, hoping to voodoo, I think, in Belfast is the spot. Uh, yeah, 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 Voodoo would be the one, all right, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, just reach out to a band's, like, say, Archives, From Runes, or another really good band. They have an EP coming out soon. Um, yeah. Shout out to the lads. You know, there's a, there's, there's a lot of bands, not quite similar to you, but they're in around that metalcore area that are up yeah. there, that are building a scene, and I'm sure they'd, gladly do a swap with G for a Dublin date, you know, support and, yeah, and yeah. vice versa. So that's how you kind of would work that one around. Yeah. And, and there's a promoter from um, based around Derry. I remember reaching out to them and we're still waiting for them to get back to us. But like, that's a spot I'd love to um, get involved with because I think they're trying to build a scene up there at the moment. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of this before until they, they reach out to us for, first. Yeah. The first yeah. time I heard about Derry uh, as um, Twas Your Man. Oh, what was his name? Jonathan, I think it was named as Jonathan. He was in, he did Frost and Fireland and he did that in Derry. Yeah. Yeah. So, Gal um, Galway seems to have gone a bit quiet, which is a shame. It is a shame. So, yeah. Sally's doesn't seem to have a setup anymore. They're, they're kind of, they, they say bring her on. Yeah. Uh, when we talk, I was like, yeah. Well, that's it. Like, I remember uh, the lad from Only Fumes and Corpses used to run shows down there. I can't that's, remember his name. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Jesus, there was a great scene in Galway. Yeah, it was so yeah. good. Like Cork, yeah. Galway, Galway is Galway is such a music hub. Like you know, you've it got is, that big yeah. college, and it's just like no metal yeah. scene. What's yeah, it's, like, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Yeah. Um, I remember there used to be one in um, Kildare as well. Son of Kildare, sorry, Kilkenny. 
Kilkenny, yeah. Because, Kilkenny um, is gone. That's where the band Itchy Trigger Finger came that's from. That's correct. Remembers them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's gone a long way back, that one is. I think, so I think there's a new place in Warford. So. But yeah, so we're, we are, we're digging, basically. Like yeah. We, we, yeah. We're, digging, we're digging our way through. Um, 12 Gauge, look, Outrage as well. Big shout out oh, to the lads in, in Wexford. Hmm? Sorry, you, you dropped for a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, 12 Gauge, Outrage, the lads in Wexford. Yeah, Wexford, they're, that's they're doing it, yeah. great things. Yeah, they're setting up uh, their own stuff. They're doing it themselves and promoting it themselves. So, you know, yeah, it's that's it. We're we're gonna we're gonna start our begging soon. That's the plan for the. Yeah. Well, you've got a fucking fantastic EP to back it up. You know, so yeah, that's it, it half the hard, battle. Yeah, it was hard to uh, you know, be like we sound like this. We swear, you know. <laughs> And um, yeah, so we have, I'm hoping, an EP release in February, March, and then another album, a full, full end. I'm in the process of writing for the year after that, the March after that. Okay. So like I'm, the way to me anyway, I'm like, let's long term this bad boy. Let's, there's no point in thinking it's short term. Mm-hmm. Let's get, let's get an Irish tour in the summer. Maybe try hit the UK at some point. See where that goes. I want to yeah. figure it out. Yeah, yeah, figure out where we're at and just keep playing shows and keep keep improving. Really, that's yeah, and building. I mean, a, a, a phrase we've always used in this band is always onwards and upwards. Yeah, yeah. That's one we've always said to ourselves, like onwards and upwards. If something goes wrong, we just keep saying to ourselves onwards and upwards. Yeah, and just keep we just keep down through like. Yeah, and look, I'll do as much as I can from this side, lads, promotion wise, and um, thanks, thanks so much for even having us on. Very like, appreciated. Ah, no yeah. problem. You're, you're a friend of the show now and uh big <laughs> shout out to andrew connor and rob who couldn't make it tonight and thanks again to the two johns for coming on the show of broken habit thank you, thank you. cheers no, a pleasure to be here yeah and as i always say support your local metal scene